Well, hello and welcome to this first lecture of the year. This is coming straight out of your text, section one of chapter one on the real numbers. Uh, my name is Tony Love, and this is going to be a great semester for pre-calculus uh, 2021. It's a whole new year, so let's get started. The real numbers really are, uh, you know, uh, the only numbers that you think to care about in life uh, much of the time. Um, <laughs> they're what you use to pay for things at the store. They're what you use to, to count things at home. They're what you use when measuring things for building or for, for baking. Uh, they're the everyday numbers that we think about and the everyday numbers that we, we are familiar with. Um, they can be categorized in, in several different ways and we can we can filter them out you know we can take strange ones and put them in a category over there we can take nice ones and put them in a category here uh, but all of the numbers we'll talk about today are numbers that we describe as real numbers okay as a, as opposed to imaginary um, so the most natural kind of number would be the number that you you first learn right whole numbers natural numbers one, two, three, the list goes on and on. Uh, these are the numbers that I've taught my children first, right? I did not start with one half. I started with one, you know, and my, my second daughter still goes two, right? But these are the most natural numbers that uh, I think the everyday person can think of. Um, second to these would be an extension of these where we include negatives right, and where we include zero. So outside of this little bubble here for natural numbers, I'm just gonna write a zero, and I'm gonna write negative one, negative two, dot, dot, dot. If we include all of those negatives now and zero, now we're talking about integers. Not fintegers, integers. So these include all the natural numbers, but they also add in zero and the negatives of the naturals. The next one, you, you might guess what the next one is, is a rational number. It's, it's when you take a natural number or an integer and you divide it by another natural number or integer uh, with the exception of zero, right? So you take any ratio of integers and you get rationals. Right, the rational numbers, one half, uh, negative nine eighths, et cetera, et cetera. We can take any ratio of integers and we get a rational number. Uh, so these ratios include all of the integers, right? Every integer is a rational number. It's just the number itself. We'll give an example here. Three is three divided by one, right? So every integer, every natural number is a rational number, just like every integer uh, every, sorry, every natural number is an integer. Every integer is also a rational number. I think I said that backwards. Every integer is a rational number. Now, sort of uh, uh, separate from these rational numbers are this extra category that they get a bit strange, right? So I'm going to draw this red bubble outside here. you might be asking yourself this question of, are there numbers that cannot be written as ratios, right? The integers are ratios. The natural numbers are ratios. Are there numbers we cannot write as a ratio? And the answer is obviously yes, right? These are not rationals. We call them irrationals. Common examples of these are the ones you might be most familiar with pi, uh, perhaps Euler's number E, uh, square root of two, 
and so many others, none of these numbers can be written as a, rash, a rational uh, uh, number. They cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. Um, and there's famous proofs for these, uh, for these not being rational numbers. So uh, just to sort of give some characteristic descriptions of these things, because um, oftentimes we think of numbers in their decimal form. We don't think of them as fractional forms or, uh, you know, these exact forms, pi, e, root two. We often think of them as decimals. So any decimal number that repeats, any decimal number that repeats like 0.33333333 forever or 0.1234, 1234, 1234 forever. Any decimal number that repeats is a rational number. So repeating decimals are rational numbers. Any decimal number that ends like 1.32, that's it. Well, that's also a rational number, okay? Any decimal number that never repeats and never ends is irrational. Not repeating, ending, decimal. What that means is if you were to write out the digits of pi, and I think you know that, it goes on forever and it never repeats and it never ends, right? E, Euler's number, as a decimal, it never repeats, it never ends. Square root of two, same, okay? So when you're looking at decimal numbers to categorize them, these are some common characteristics for you to look out for. Uh, real numbers have these really nice properties, and I'm gonna go through three of them here. The first one is commutative. Commutative means to have the ability to move around. Now, when you're moving around real numbers, when I say commutative and having the ability of moving around, I'm also including an operation and that operation is addition. So the real numbers along with the operation of adding, they can move around. So if I take any number like one and I add it to another number two, that of course, it's three, and that's exactly the same as moving the one and the two around. So two plus one. This is the commutative property um, with addition. This does not hold with subtraction, right? You can't commute numbers around subtraction. One minus two equals negative one, which does not equal one, which is two minus one, okay? Uh, so with real numbers, you have commutativity with addition. You can move the order and, it, and the result doesn't change. The next nice property that allows you to solve or simplify problems is the associative problem, the associative property. This property is useful in doing certain additions first and saving others for later, right? So maybe I can ask you the question of, what is one plus 99 plus 97, right? Now, those of you out there listening who enjoy challenge will add 99 to 97 first. And then to that result, you'll add one to that result second, right? And what you're doing is you're associating 99 and 97 first with these, we call them parentheses. Okay. If you see parentheses around something in a mathematical expression like this, it means to do those things first. The most inner parentheses have to happen first. So we can associate this result like, like so, um, or we can write it in another way. For those of you who enjoy to do the, your math a little bit more easily, like me, you know, I see this one and 99 and I think, let's do that first. Cause in my head, I know that's 100. <laughs> and then second, I add the 97 because hundred plus 97 is easy. So what I'm actually doing is I'm associating those two numbers first 
instead of the other two. So this is a property of real numbers with addition that you can associate two numbers with the operation uh, in any order you want. So if you see a string of three things, you can add any two of them together first. With the first property, commutativity, you can even reorder them to regroup them. Um, so you can add in any order and you can uh, group in any order with addition and real numbers. The next and last property and the last topic for this video before we get into something else in the next one uh, is the distributive property uh, for real numbers. Now, this one brings in a little bit of multiplication. So just real briefly, multiplication of any two real numbers. Um, you know, if, if you add two numbers together, like add six plus three, what you're kind of doing is you're, you're adding like lengths of things. So let's say this is a, a line of units of six units long, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we add to it a, a line of three units long one, two, three. Well, then the result is a line of nine units. Now, multiplication, of course, means we're talking about something entirely different than lengths adding together. Multiplication can be related here to area, six times three, which is, of course, 18. It relates to the area, the square feet, if you will, square yards uh, of that rectangle that's formed uh, by a six foot by a three foot or six unit by three unit um, rectangle. That's the area of it. Um, so this would be 18 square units. So the distributive property takes with it uh, a couple operations. We're going to work with addition and multiplication, which sometimes I'll abbreviate with a dot, okay? Um, the distributed property for addition and multiplication goes like this. Let's say we have two times six plus three. The distributive property says that this result, which is two times, 18, uh, two times nine, which is 18, getting ahead of myself here, uh, we can do that two different ways. We can first add, so we get nine and then multiply by two, or we can distribute the two. We can distribute the multiplication. You can think about like handing something out to multiple people. You're distributing this two across the sum. So this becomes two times six, which is 12, plus two times three, which is six, which gives us overall 18, and these are exactly the same. That's the distributive property for multiplication over addition. It doesn't matter which side this multiplication is from. I could very well have written this two on the other side. Okay, and it doesn't matter what numbers I use, so long as they're real numbers, this property will hold. I can always distribute if I like, or if I'm told and I'll get the exact same result as if I first accomplished what was in the parentheses uh, and then multiplied by two. So those are the three properties of real numbers that we're gonna get into this uh, first lesson. Uh, just to review, we, we quickly looked at several different kinds of real numbers. We looked at natural numbers, the integer numbers, and the rational numbers, ratios of integers. Uh, and then we, we said these are all sort of nested together in a group. Uh, a group of nice numbers, if you will. And then we looked at a different kind of number, the irrationals that can't be written as a ratio. They're, they're apart from the rational numbers. They're separate. Uh, and then lastly, we looked at these three properties, the commutative property, the associative property, and the distributive property. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.